Chapter 740 in Apocalypse is coming you are listening at NovelFull.audio. The first thing that popped up in Litha's mind as he wrote those three words was about what he knew about them. Rage swelled up within him as he recalled the things done by that clan, still, he tried to suppress it and focused on the things he knew. The very first thing he recalled was them being a clan full of legendary ranks. As far as he knew, his mother was a legendary rank as well. Though with just her strength it was nigh impossible to win against the Avur God clan. Lith didn't know what the actual strength was of a legendary rank, but he knew that one person won't be able to defeat an entire clan if the highest members of the said clan were of the same realm as the person. I've not battled with anyone as if my life depended on it yet. However, I am prepared if there ever comes a time like this. Life and death battles weren't simple. There was a lot that went into play in them other than the normal attacks via spells and artifacts. Each person had many underlying tricks and what would come next was something not easily predictable. Not to mention, when one knew they were going to die anyway, the instincts to cause the utmost damage to their foe would shoot up, making them reach monstrous levels of strength. If one person was formidable to such a degree before their deaths, what would be the case with a clan filled with gods? Lith sighed. Just killing an immortal was a task in itself. He couldn't even imagine what it would take to kill a god, let alone a clan filled with gods. Preparation is needed. Lots and lots of preparation is needed. Lith said out loud. Now that he had sat down to think about things and was planning stuff, the harsh reality dawned on him. He was at level zero despite being an immortal at such a young age. He was in his youth and was enjoying himself without a care, but someday or the other, he would need to step up and take responsibility. Why wait for such a, someday, to come? Lith thought out loud. I might as well just start from today, from this very instant onwards. As Lith continued to write more things on the paper, the more alarming the situation became. Ever since stepping into the astral realm, he had felt a strange sense of danger and was always pushing to become the best version of himself. However, now the danger seemed to have intensified. Lith felt as if there was a dagger a few inches away from his neck, ready to pierce him at any moment's notice. Gates to other worlds had opened up, there was a constant flow of creatures from the other side into this world. These gates weren't leading to dimensions connected to this world anymore, but a completely different set of worlds with its own rules. If the Avur God clan members were to know of this world, it would spell doom. A literal apocalypse would arrive and everything would be destroyed, including Lith and his family. Alarms rang in Litha's mind as he came to this realization and he felt goosebumps all over his body. With a chill down his spine, Litha's senses heightened up and he thought out loud, an apocalypse. Ding! Host has a message. Dot the chill within Lith subdued instantly as he got a notification from the system. Blinking stupendously, he asked, what is it? Playing message, in the next instant, Litha's vision darkened and the next thing he knew, he found himself standing in front of a raging volcano, appearing to erupt at any moment's notice. The surroundings were dark and gloomy, but had a red tint to them due to the volcano. A second later, a giant shadowy figure manifested right in front of Lith. The shadow appeared like a knight, though there were no details on it and it was just an outline. We meet again, Bumpkin. Lith heard a familiar voice. Without giving a change to Lith to speak, the shadow bent down to meet Litha's eye level and putting his index finger on Litha's forehead, he slightly poked him and asked, Why are your emotions in such turmoil? Grand Lust Sovereign. Lith said softly and then sighed. Why am I seeing you right now? You're my only inheritor and the system detected dangerous levels of chaotic emotions from you, thus triggering this message from me. I am not real, just a pre-recorded message. I see. Lith answered. He then sighed and answered, it's for the first time I've encountered something that makes me stressed, hence the turmoil. Hmm. The shadow hummed. What have you encountered? Would telling you do me any better? Lith asked. It sure will. The shadow answered instantly. 
but aren't you a pre that recorded message? How can you interact with me and provide a solution? Lith didn't understand and asked. The shadow sighed in response. I really do not understand how my inheritor is such an idiot. You stupid bumpkin, who do you think am I? A puny immortal. Lith blinked in befuddlement and couldn't tell why the shadow seemed annoyed. I am literally the universe's number one dual cultivator, a mighty god. Do you think a pre-recorded message from me will just be an announcement? Oh, he's offended. Lith thought. Clearing his throat, Lith replied, my bad. What do you want to know? Everything. The shadow replied. Since you're able to trigger this message, I am assuming it's something really serious you're going through. Tell me what the problem is, I'll try to help you this time. Lith stared at the shadow for a good while as he heard that and thought, what sort of luck do I have to get such help out of nowhere? Shaking his head, he looked at the shadow and said, well, what's happening is. Lith tried to explain the situation in a manner he would to a friend. He didn't hand out all the personal details, just enough that would let the other party know what the problem was and provide solutions. Once he was done explaining, the shadow said, so an apocalypse is on your way, hmm. Lith nodded his head. That's right. The shadow looked at him and shaking his head, said, it's such a small thing, bumpkin. Why are you worried so much? What? Chapter 741 Better to give a green hat than to wear one you are listening at novelfull.audio. What? The shadow clicked his tongue and poking Litha's forehead and pushing him back slightly, continued, I said it's such a small thing, why are you so worried? Because of you triggering this message, I had thought that you got cucked or something and was about to show a message related to it to you. But this case is completely different and so small. Lith knitted his brows and stared at the shadow. How do you think this is small? Well, you answer me, is this situation more unnerving or, would a situation where your wife or lover got fucked by someone else be more unnerving to you? The shadow argued. Lith wanted to curse the shadow for thinking his situation was so small, but the argument he put up, it made him think twice before speaking and got him thinking about it. Just as Lith pictured his wife getting fucked by someone else, a bolt of lightning traversed through his body instantly, causing all the hair on him to stand on their ends. A never-before-felt chill coursed through him and the rage within him was far stronger than the one he had felt before. Tap. The shadow poked Litha's forehead again and made him calm down instantly. See, told you. This situation is nothing in front of that. The shadow said. Having calmed down and getting his thoughts cleared up, Lith took a deep breath and nodded his head lightly. You're right. This situation doesn't seem as bad now. Lith replied. The shadow cackled. Don't think of it like that. The situation is still bad for you. If what you're thinking comes true, your enemies will target your lovers. Who is to say they'll just kill them and not capture Anne? Well, you get my point, right? Lith breathed heavily hearing that. Just imagining the things that may happen to his wives made his heart palpitate and shiver from rage. Still, composing himself, he nodded his head lightly again. Right. The shadow then went beside Lith and wrapping his giant hand around his shoulders, pointed at the raging volcano. That's your state currently. You're a volcano that's about to erupt. Lava could be heard sloshing in the volcano and some spilling out from it. If you erupt now. The shadow made a rise up gesture with his other hand and the volcano erupted, lighting up the entire dark sky red and showcasing a beautiful scenery. The lava then came crashing down and soon reached Litha's feet and passed through him. Nothing happened to Lith as the scene was imaginary. There's no good thing that'll come out of it since you've caused no destruction to anything. However, the shadow snapped his fingers and the scene changed to a dormant volcano being close to a settlement. There was a forest around it and the settlement was that of a town. People could be seen roaming and doing their work. 
The shadow then snapped his fingers again and the day turned into night with everyone from the settlement going to their respective houses to sleep. The shadow then took Lith to the volcano and inside it. There Lith could see tumultuous waves of lava sloshing deep within it, building up great pressure and seeming like it would erupt at any moment. If you lay low and erupt at the right time. The volcano erupted once again and this time the lava rose high up in the sky, appearing like beautiful fireworks. A rain of lava then crashing down on the settlement and the forests followed by a wave of lava from within the volcano, giving no time for the people in the settlement to run and turn them to ashes right away. You can cause destruction far greater than you can even think of. The scene then cleared up and going in front of Lith, the shadow continued, instead of worrying about what can or will happen, go venture out of your world. Make allies, connections, get people on your side, and turn everyone against that clan you're talking about. Even if it contains a hundred legendary ranks, you can counter them by making use of the rest of the clans in that entire star system. Lith sighed. Saying this is easy, but, bumpkin. The shadow gazed at Lith seriously. Why do you think I chose you as my inheritor? How would I know? It was probably an accident, I guess. Lith answered. No. The shadow replied in a serious manner. There are no accidents when beings of my level are involved. It was your destiny to meet me. And since you are my inheritor. The shadow poked Litha's forehead again, this time causing him some mild pain. Don't think low of yourself. There are things you can't imagine you are capable of doing. I don't know what they are, but they are there. BVE see the shadow then cackled. Funny enough, do you know, you would have survived through this hardship even without me sending out this message to you. Anyway, since we are meeting, being my inheritor, I'll part some of my knowledge so that you excel in this and grow stronger. Lith didn't say anything in just thought, it seems he misunderstood me. I was never thinking low of me, I was just saying things are hard. But oh well. Any help is appreciated since I am at level zero right now. The shadow continued, the best way to form an alliance with any clan is to show your loyalty to them and what you can provide to make them get respected everywhere. Lith nodded and made mental notes. This thing I said, it applies to a normal person, not you. The shadow then flung his arm around Litha's shoulders and snapping his fingers, the volcanic scene changed into that of a throne room, a place Lith had seen before. You're not supposed to approach things in the traditional way. To form alliances, find the clans where women rule and get them first by sleeping with them. Once that is done, spread your influence to other clans and slowly but surely, you can get everyone on your side. Lith was seriously dumbfounded listening to this. He interrupted the shadow by saying, I am not cheating on my wives. What? The shadow was surprised. You heard it. No cheating. Lith repeated. The shadow turned to Lith and with a serious tone, said, Do you understand what you're saying? Chapter 742 Hypocritical Behavior and Double Standards You are listening at NovelFull.audio what you're saying. Yes, I do. Lith repeated. No, you don't. The shadow said swiftly. He snapped his fingers and the scene changed into that of the royal castle. There, Lith saw Luna, Bella, and Qingyue working. They're not your wives, yet you've slept with them. How do you explain this hypocrite behavior of yours? The shadow asked. Lith knitted his brows. Are you spying on me? I am not and I don't have any interest to do so either. The shadow explained. Neither I nor this system spies on you. Being my inheritor, I've given you at least this little amount of protection where no higher being can spy on you, so stop worrying about it and answer my other question. Lith stared at the shadow, slightly paranoid about this whole thing and didn't believe him. Before that, tell me, why are you doing all of this? giving me protection, advices, and whatnot. What's your end goal? What do you want from me? The shadow flicked Litha's forehead hearing that. You country bumpkin, stop being so paranoid. 
the shadow's tone turned slightly soft now. Not everyone has an ulterior motive. The level I am at, you cannot even fathom it yet. And at such a high level, do you think I'd be interested in a puny immortal sex life? There's no pleasure in it and neither is there any entertainment. It was all destiny that brought us together, nothing more, nothing less. The things the shadow said made sense and Litha's paranoia lessened. Though, he still harbored some doubts as Lith refused to believe that someone would be so kind to him just for the sake of it. Okay. Lith said simply. Keeping this aside, why do you think my behavior is hypocritical? Is it not? You tell me. The shadow said. You have wives whom you married yet you're fooling around with the maids and other people. You say you don't want to cheat on them, but isn't this cheating itself? No. Lith answered. My maids are a part of my harem and the ones with whom I've mingled, they're going to be my future wives. Silly bumpkin, you've cheated on them already by having romantic interests in others. Even though you say you're going to marry them, you haven't married them yet. As per your maids, it's fine with them since you have no romantic interests. Remember, it's cheating if you have romantic interests in others. Lith stared at the guy with a visible dumbfounded gaze. Was he high or was this guy high? What was this conversation? It seemed so hypocritical and so stupid. Feeling Litha's gaze, the shadow cackled. Find it odd, don't you? I find it stupid. Lith said honestly. Because it is. The shadow replied. Having a harem is cheating in itself since you're not committed to just one partner. It's hypocritical of everyone to think that they're not cheating when in a polygamist relationship. If one truly doesn't want to cheat, it's best to stick together with one partner. What I am trying to say in this is that, it doesn't matter who you sleep with. What matters is, are the members of your harem happy? The shadow fell silent after stating that question. Lith thought about it and realized. His wives were really understanding. They wouldn't mind if he slept with others as they knew he loved them to a very high degree. However, did that mean he would go sleep with just any woman because his wives didn't mind? The answer was no. He wanted to keep his body reserved to just his ladies. The ones he loved and the ones he cherished. His maids were a gray area since he didn't have romantic interests in them, but he did cherish them for being so loyal and sticking with him and his family for so long. Whatever the case, Lith wasn't going to sleep with random women just like that. Looking at the shadow, he said, whatever you say, I am still not sleeping with random women. You have to. You have to sleep with women to cultivate. At least one lady in each realm above yours. There's no skipping that. The shadow replied. Lith sighed. I'll see to that later. At present, I don't need to worry about it. The shadow cackled again. Whatever you say. But remember, my inheritance works really well in charming ladies and the method I told you, it's the easiest one. Lith nodded. I'll see to it. The shadow then got in a serious mood again and staring at Lith, said, remember Lith, the universe is far bigger than you think it is. Use whatever means are available to you and get to at least a rank where you can hide and live a peaceful life. And what is such a rank? Lith asked, curious. The one nobody knows. The shadow replied, leaving Lith confused. The shadow then continued, there's another way in which you could solve your problem. That is. Litha's attention diverted into this. This method is almost impossible, you'd have a much better shot at forming alliances and going against the said clan. Lith knitted his brows. At least tell me what you're talking about. The shadow let out a visible sigh. My real self would be so stupefied when he comes to know about your double standards. Whatever, at least I don't have to deal with any of this since I am just a pre-recorded message. Lith stayed silent and waited for him to continue. Going beside Lith, the shadow then snapped his fingers and the scene changed to that of space. Lith was looking at a big blue dot green sphere. 
That giant blue dot green star is yours, Bumpkin. The shadow then snapped his fingers and the scene changed into many similar stars being present together. That's a star system. It may look like one has put shiny spheres on a carpet, but in reality, it's far more vast than you could even think of. The shadow snapped his fingers after saying so and the scene changed to that being the blue dot green star. That's your star and I am sure it has a star master. The ones who are up against you are also star masters, so what you need to do is, find the person above a star master. Lith looked at the shadow and asked, who is? The shadow made the scene change again and it was that of an old man sitting cross-legged in the vast expanse of space. There was a small rectangular hologram type thing in front of him, in which there appeared many shiny dots. That person. Not the exact same one, but the one overseeing all the stars in this star system. Does he have a name like Star Master? Lith asked. Yes. It's. The Stellar Warden. Dot a slash n. Please send in your power stones and golden tickets, it helps support the novel a lot. Do let me know your thoughts on Lith finding potential MILFs in future. Unsatisfied MILFs who become a slave to Litha's Ding Dong. Although they stay with their husbands, they sleep just with Lith. Is it fair on Litha's wives such as Amelia for Lith to go around filling holes of random strangers or is it justified? Should Lith do the green hatting or should Lith become Neo temporarily and do it from that body instead of his? I'll be going through all the opinions and let you guys know what the majority thinks and what is the future of the novel regarding MILFs in the later chapters. Chapter 743 Lilith gets the best seat in the world you are listening at novel full audio. Litha's Bedroom, Royal Castle the Shadow didn't explain Lith too many things, just that there was some high-ranking being called the Stellar Warden who managed star systems. Getting hold of him and making him move would result in the entire clan being wiped out, he was that powerful. This made Lith realize, the Xianxia novels he had read in his past life, they all stated that there was always a bigger fish, a higher universe, and a higher cultivation rank. It was easy to guess that the Stellar Warden may be someone of a rank higher than what Lith currently knew, the legendary rank. Sighing and shaking his head, Lith focused on the pen and paper again in his hands. What the Shadow had said was true. Instead of letting the apocalypse come to him, he could trigger it himself by raining doom on the accursed people. He had never seen or met his grandma, but just the glimpse of her was enough to let him know everything about her. She truly loved his mother and if the whole fiasco wouldn't have happened, he knew she would have taken great care of her and not let her be alone. This thing also made Lith understand just how lonely his mother actually was in this world. Despite the vastness of the universe, her whole world revolved around just him and his sister. Lith felt slightly melancholic, but also happy. He was really happy to know he had such a great mother who loved him unconditionally and would do anything for him, she had worked hard for so long, from being an abandoned child to the world's strongest. The path definitely may not have been easy, but she worked her ass off to provide all the luxury Lith had today. Ever since his birth, he was born with an amethyst spoon. He never had to struggle for anything and had a gut feeling that he wouldn't need to struggle for anything in the coming future either. His status was so high, Lith couldn't help but think. I am actually a young master from those Xianxia novels. Not just any, but a final boss level young master. Lith chuckled at this realization. Since his mother worked so much and brought him such great luxury, it would be stupid of him to not make use of it. Their wealth was so vast, Lith had heard from his sister that she had tried spending a lot of money, but not even 1% of the treasury was expended. Lith basically had unlimited money and a super powerful status. He also made his own money that was one of the goals of his past self. Now he was free from all shackles and had truly understood to make use of everything. His mother would be sad if he didn't use the things acquired for him. Thinking of the assets his mother had acquired, Litha's thoughts drifted to thinking about those assets. His maids to be precise. More than a hundred virgins, all specially trained and brought up just for him to use. 
he may really need to use their services otherwise those little lasses would just live a life without a husband or lover, completely unsatisfied. Lith could guess that they may have gotten tired of using their fingers by now and felt he should give them some opportunity to be useful. But before any of that, Lith first tried to finish what he was doing. He continued to plan a few things on the paper and muttered softly. This world is my home. I don't want it to be destroyed. This one thought led to many others. He understood that to fight with the Avur God clan members and their allies, he would need his very own army as well as allies. As the Shadow had mentioned, the easiest was to sleep with women and acquire those clans. Lith currently wasn't ready to venture out to do that, but he for sure was ready to perform a mock trial of things. Before the apocalypse, Lith felt it would be good to test things in his own world. The world has been at peace for far too long. They're also weak and won't survive if the Avur God clan elders arrive. They need to be prepared for conflicts too. That's it. I've decided. I'll cause a huge contained chaos. The whole world will be at war with themselves. He he he. I also haven't seen my wives in much action, it will be fun and they'll also be entertained with the thousand schemes and attacks coming at them. Lith began formulating plans and he was so excited for it, he finished the entire book. Lith then put the book in his ring and stretching, smiled and walked out of his room. He felt like meeting his mother right now and shower her with love. Meeting Hall, Outer Ring Neo was currently standing between his two teachers, Reuben and Noman. They were standing in rows and getting instructions from Bella in front of them. When Neo had no instructions from his master, he would stick with his two teachers, which unofficially made him a royal servant. As he stood and continued to listen, Neo suddenly got a command from Lith. Knowing he had to move, Neo tugged on Noman's sleeves. Noman turned to look at him and Neo leaned to the side and whispered a few things. Noman nodded and then left the meeting with him and Reuben after informing Bella of their leave. Bella didn't question them and neither did she stop them. She knew they wouldn't leave unless there was something that came up. Ignoring them, she continued on with her instructions. Hopping his way through the hallway, Lith found his mother sitting in a courtyard filled with beautiful red flowers. He went towards her and hugging her from behind, swayed side to side, a usual habit of his that he inherited from her, and said with a smile, Mom. I love you. Lilith was amused with the sudden reaction of her son and chuckling, she extended her hand and patted Litha's face that was now glued to hers. Someone's happy, it seems. True. Lith said and kissed her cheek. I just feel so happy that I don't know how or where to channel it. Should I just devour you, mom? Lilith chuckled and turning her face to the side, kissed Litha's softly. Mama is busy right now, dear. A pity. Lith said. Indeed. Lilith nodded. But if you want to, you can come sit on Mama's lap and get a handjob while she works. Oh, good idea. Lith exclaimed. But let's change it a bit. Saying so, he made his mother get up and went in to plant a loving kiss on her tender lips while hands went behind and squeezed the big fleshy cheeks. He then skillfully made her panties disappear and also got his own pants lowered. Lith then sat down on the chair and made his mother sit on his lap instead. Just as Lilith did that, her insides were pierced by her son's naughty stick and her feel full. She could only chuckle and shake her head at such gestures of his. Lilith then went back to working while Lith just laid there and disturbed his mother by showering her with all the hugs and kisses she deserved. Lilith had gotten herself the best seat in the world and she definitely couldn't have asked for anything better. She worked even more diligently now and tried to finish things quickly so she could get back to him while Lith enjoyed the best warmth in the world and began to fully get used to the amethyst spoon he was born with. Hippo. Hi there, please send in your power stones and golden tickets. Chapter 744 The Universe Wants to Corrupt Lith You are listening at NovelFull.audio It had been half an hour since Lith turned into a chair. He, for one, didn't hate it as there was no discomfort, just great pleasure. 
His mother kept tightening up her insides from time to time, massaging him and threatening to squeeze him dry. It was a great feeling and Lith enjoyed it thoroughly while reciprocating by giving her a similar pleasure. BDNV his mother didn't talk to him until now as she was really busy. Lith now felt curious and wondered what she was doing. He peeked a glance at her work and saw her scribbling on some ancient scrolls with a quill. The language or the inscriptions on it were something Lith hadn't seen before. He didn't disturb her and asked what it was since if she felt he would need to be taught these things, she would have done it already. Lith continued to watch her and when he felt bored, he would play with her big knockers while also pumping her soft insides. Fifteen more minutes later, she put her quill down and called her maid's name out. Qingyue teleported right away when she was called and bowed, awaiting her madam's instructions. Qingyue did get a glimpse of her madam and her prince, but she pretended as if she didn't see anything. It was just a normal day in the inner ring. Qingyue, are the invitations sent out? Lilith asked. Yes, madam. From sources, we've also learnt that everybody is busy preparing for the banquet. Purchasing clothes, gifts, and so on. Did Deer decide the venue? Her Majesty had selected three venues, but in the end decided it was best if the main event was hosted in the Queen's district. Lilith nodded. All right. So I assume all the preparations are done, yes. Yes, madam. Qingyue said politely. Okay, you may go now. Lilith dismissed Qingyue. She then turned around without having Litha's shaft taken out and facing him, said while holding his face gently, Baby, as the banquet nears, you have to do a few things. Lith nodded. What is it, Mom? Lilith began explaining that he would need to act in a certain manner, do certain things, and also be certain to not fool around this time. The banquet would be out in public and there would be too many eyes. He could do all the perverted things he wanted after the people had gone. Lith smiled and taking one of his mother's breasts out of her, sucked some milk and asked, no milk either. Lilith smiled and shook her head. Do you know baby, you're perhaps the only vampire who likes milk so much. Others prefer blood or simply water. Lith chuckled. Now this was some good news he was hearing. He looked his mother in the eyes and gently pinching her nipple, replied, If word were to get out that the prince preferred milk over blood, I am sure all the cow tribe ladies from the beastkins would mysteriously make their way to the vampire continent and sell breast milk like crazy. Lilith chuckled hearing that. It was quite a high possibility of happening. Anyway, be good and no messing around, okay? Lilith said one final time. Lith nodded. Yes, your majesty the vampire queen. Anything else you'd like thy lowly servant to do? Yes. Lilith said and leaned closer. The queen's craving some dessert right now. What do you have? Lith took his long hair from the side and putting it on his face, created a fake mustache. He then said like a connoisseur, Madam, today's special is a fresh whip to cream. Would you like some? Lilith chuckled. Yes, right away. Then, behold. Lith held her hips and made her bounce on him faster. Lilith tightened up her insides and in no time, felt her son's bulge get bigger. She stopped riding him and immediately went down to gobble his entire length in her mouth, giving him a dreamy hot deep throat. She just had to bob her head a few times and made Lith groan. He held her head in place and shoved his shaft deeper into her mouth, shooting loads of cream one after another. Lilith skillfully gulped down everything and licked Litha's shaft clean. Thank you for the meal. Lilith chuckled and got up, wiping her face elegantly with a soft cloth. Lith breathed heavily in looking at his mother, did a weak thumbs up and said, You're the best, Mom. Impeccable skills. Even Aunt Lucifer pales in comparison to you. Fufufu, feel free to ask Mama any time you want to go for a round. Lilith said and sat down on the chair opposite to Lith. She definitely was really busy as she immediately got to work after finishing her job. Looking at her work so seriously made Lith lost in her beauty. 
he fell in a daze and forgot to even cover up. It was only when a breeze flew past did he feel cold down there and realize he should cover up. However, instead of doing it himself, he called for Luna, who appeared in an instant. Looking at her, Lith got up and said, It's chilly out here, Luna. I need a warm chair while I watch Mom work. Lilith gazed at Lith, but then smiling and shaking her head, went back to work. Her son was starting to talk like a real noble, it seems. Must be the training from Mazin. Luna had no idea what to do and tilted her head in confusion. Before she could ask Lith, he simply chuckled and turned the chair, then took off Luna's maid outfit and made her sit on it. Her back faced Lilith and Lith went ahead and sat on her lap. His shaft rubbed on her abdomen and leaning forwards, he melted in his maid's massive knockers. MHM, warmth. Lith said and placed his head on Luna's shoulder while his chest squished her tits. Luna blinked in amusement as she got herself involved in some sort of weird play by her prince. She of course didn't hate it and was actually glad he called her and made use of her. She had been working non-stop without any breaks for the past few days and it seemed like a nice break to her. While feeling Luna's warmth, Lith closed his eyes and diverted his attention somewhere else. Human Continent Neil had parted ways with Noman and Reuben who left for the Angel and Demon Continent respectively. He was now sneaking up inside the castle of Viscount Tang Jiao to meet his two wives, Mei Li and Niwa. As Neo made his way past the guards and entered the bedroom of Niwa, the seductress who opened an entire path for him in the human continent. Glancing here and there, he found out that she was bathing. Worried about nothing, he made his way inside and just as he had a glance at her back, his magenta-colored eyes changed to amethyst ones for a quick second and then reverted back. Lith, who just took over Neo, was suddenly watching a lady bath. Damn, I thought I'll have a meeting with a lady, didn't think it would be like this. It seems the universe wants to corrupt me. A slash N. I am thinking of stopping to add in the chapter titles. What do you think of it? Let me know. Chapter 745 A Coup Against the Ancestor You are listening at NovelFull.audio As Niwa heard footsteps, she turned around, only to flash a wide smile and say seductively, somebody couldn't resist himself, it seems. Lith, looking at the perverted lady in front, chuckled. From Neo, he came to know just how much in heat the average married lady was. Niwa's husband has not been paying her attention as he was busy fondling some younger woman's cheeks. This obviously angered Mei Li and Niwa since cheating was too big of a deal in the human continent. Mei Li and Niwa had their guilty feelings flushed away when they found this out. It was of course Neo who brought it to light and his bond with the two deepened further. Mei Li and Niwa were Neo's personal milfs and these two ladies didn't even let their husband touch them ever since the first day of meeting Neo. Niwa got out of the shower, the water dripping down her sexy body. Her hips swayed and she appeared no less than a succubus wanting to devour her prey. Lith stared at her body as she walked up to him, staying in character and not showing his usual serious face. Sure Niwa was a hot milf, but was not even 5% close to perfection. The perfection being his own mother whom he considered the pinnacle. Lith walked towards Niwa and kissed her. Although he didn't want to touch the ladies his avatar had already slept with, he had to do it right now as he had some important instructions to give to her. Lith fondled Niwa's breasts and ass while kissing her and using a few techniques, brought her to an orgasm in ten minutes. Once it had subdued and she recovered, Lith took her to the bedroom and sat on the edge while keeping her on his lap. Lith played with Niwa's breasts and said, I have a few things to talk about today. Niwa chuckled. I figured. Lith nodded and continued, I'll not beat around the bush and give it to you straight. My family is planning a coup and will be overthrowing the ancestor himself. What? Niwa was so shocked. She also jumped away in fright. Lith held her in place and spanked her butt, causing her to gasp as a sharp pain assaulted her. Ouch, why would you do that? Niwa complained. Stop having useless reactions and just listen. 
Lith instructed and Niwa reluctantly nodded her head. She preferred a more passionate approach and not something rough like this. Meili would have loved it though, she thought. The things that'll happen in the coming future are going to change the entire course of history. In the coming few years, it'll seem like we are back in the chaotic era. Niwa gasped again. This was too much for her to handle, but she tried her best to keep calm and continue to listen. The tranquility era has been here for far too long. People have forgotten what actual war is. The ancestor never helped when things went out of control during the devil invasion and he also didn't do shit when Raisin, literally his hometown, got raised. He's really just a spineless coward who needs to be replaced. Niwa was shocked to hear such comments but couldn't help and nod. That was true. Their ancestor was probably the worst supreme out there. Lith continued, our family has found a suitable candidate. He's a supreme rank as well and can handle the ancestor. As for the emperors, they'll be taken care of easily too. What I want from you is to unite all the viscounts you could and as for the remaining ones, give me a list of their wives, concubines, or any dirty secret you have them. Niwa smirked and pinched Lith, Neo, a stomach. You slept with almost the entire baron and viscount population, yet you ask for such things. Oh. Neo did such a thing. Damn. Lith thought. He should probably commend this guy. Clearing his throat, Lith said, just to be sure. We need some blackmail material in case some refuse to join the coup. All right, anything else? Yes. Lith said and squeezed her butt cheeks. Today we'll explore the forbidden back door. I remember it's still left and used. Niwa gasped in surprise but then giggled and said, you finally remembered. Me and May had been waiting for this for so long. Lith nodded and slapped her cheek, making it jiggle. Go call May, I wanna open the two doors simultaneously. Niwa giggled softly and went to get dressed to fetch May Lee. Halt. Don't dress. Her room is just beside, go in just the way you are. Niwa blinked in surprise and wondered, since when did he become so perverted? Shaking her head, she did as asked. There was nobody who would see her anyway. As she left, Neo's eyes changed colors and were back to their magenta self. He then heard in his mind. Make sure to give the two a proper workout so that they wouldn't be able to walk for a few days. Yes, master. Neo bowed and responded. Back in the royal castle, Lith opened his eyes and found himself sitting on Luna's lap. His mother turned to look at him and asked with a smile, What are you planning now? Lith, who felt hot down there, guided Luna's hand to soothe it and explained to his mother, Nothing much. I am just getting bored, need some exercise. Lilith chuckled and went back to doing her work. She was looking forward to her son's shenanigans. While getting stroked by Luna, Lith started having thoughts of paying her back door a visit. He had already been satisfied by the world's hottest woman once, but Niwa then sparked a fire within him and now he craved some anal. Not just any, he wanted to open some fresh doors right now once realized Niwa and Meili had never done it there before. Lith wasn't jealous of his own avatar, he just got a craving after looking at them. He wasn't going to touch the toys of his avatar since he wasn't that depraved or desperate. There were so many beauties waiting for him in the castle already, the line was long. Lith didn't want to fall into this debauched life, but the calling of the dark side was strong. Lith had decided to keep his harem limited to just the ones he loved and not go filling any holes he found. In any case, he wasn't planning on filling random holes anyway. There were some that he really cared for and wanted to pay attention to. He had plans to do the things he was thinking of during the banquet, but he felt it wouldn't hurt to shift a few things here and there. Thinking so, he switched positions with Luna and made her sit on his lap instead. Litha's hand that was on her big but slithered to find the puckered pink flowered. He slipped a finger in, causing Luna to let out a small moan. Lith loosened his vampire maid's butthole a bit as it definitely would have recovered to its original state. I should plug them if it's a regular thing, 
thought Lith as Luna's tight insides wrapped around his finger. Lith took his finger out and made Luna suck on it to clean it while he took out his phone and ordered a few butt plugs. They appeared right on the table in front of him the next instant and taking a shiny plug with a precious and magical red stone attached to it, rubbed it on Luna's back door. Luna slightly tensed up as she felt a cold sensation, but Lith rubbed his shaft on her clit and made her relaxed. Lith slowly plugged Luna's back entrance and once done, got her to dress up and had her dress him too. Lith then went to his mother and kissing her lips softly, said, Don't overwork yourself, mom. Otherwise you'll start having wrinkles. Lilith chuckled and said, Don't worry about it and go play. Oh yes, before you go. Lilith got up and bent down on the table, lifting her skirt up and showing Lith the place he came from a hundred years ago. It looked as sexy as it could be. Plug mama too, she said. Lith nodded and making Luna suck on a shiny butt plug with amethyst embedded on it, inserted in his mother's asshole. Lith then inserted his two fingers in her pussy and got them nicely coated in her juices. He tasted it and said while leaving, see you later, mom. Lilith sat down and waved at him. Looking at his departing back, she said softly with a chuckle, he's a growing boy. It's no surprise he's constantly in heat. Too bad, he's a vampire and not a human. Lilith shook her head. Humans are never out of heat while the vampires have phases. Lilith then looked at Litha's distancing back. Fufufu. I wonder what his reactions will be when he's in the abstinence phase. A slash n, sorry, there's been too much horny lately. Don't worry though, I'll be sure to keep the coming 200.300 chapters without plot to drive plot forwards. Enjoy, winky face. Chapter 746 Commando Maker You are listening at NovelFull.audio Lith walked with Luna towards the study where Lucy was. Entering inside, Lith saw her busy with work while Freya, his sister's personal maid, a pretty blonde elf with G-cup breasts, was sitting on the couch and working as well. As Lucy and Freya noticed Lith, Freya got up and bowed while Lucy, in a regal outfit and a crown on her head, asked, Something's up, little brother. Lith gestured to Luna to sit beside Freya while he went behind the queen, Lucy. Massaging her shoulders gently, he said, Nope. Just came to check up on you. Lucy let out a soft man from the gentle massage and said, Feeling relaxed, I am busy. There's security arrangements I am cross-checking right now. Litha's hands moved down her shoulders and into her robes as he leaned forward to see the papers. Grabbing hold of his sister's big soft melons, Lith said, Hmm. I think you should prioritize more people within the hall rather than outside. Why, NGHN, do you say so? Lucy asked while trying not to moan as Lith pinched her nipples. There's going to be a lot of people in the venue. Lith gave his reasons and in the meantime made Lucy get up from her chair and slightly bend on the table, making her have a proper look at the papers while he had a proper look behind her. What makes you think that? Lucy asked as she found no problems with the arrangements nor the position her little brother was putting her in. Lifting her dress up and pulling her panties down, Lith answered without looking at the papers, Your Majesty, don't you think there will be more powerful people inside the venue than outside? Shouldn't it be more secure in the inner areas? Before Lucy could answer, Lith made her suck on an amethyst plug to let her think before answering. Lucy had no idea what new place her brother was up to, but oh well, she didn't hate it and it was a nice break from the hectic workload. As for Lith, it felt sexy knowing that the queen who was feared by everyone in the world, was so submissive in front of her beloved husband. Lith took out the plug from Lucy's mouth and poked her back door with it, making her slightly tense up in reflex. Lucy looked behind and said, Little brother, are you forgetting a few factors? Hmm. Lith asked while slowly plugging up Lucy. What factors? Most of Lucy's focus was on the conversation and not the things her little brother was doing to her. She was his wife and belonged to him. He could do anything he wanted with her. Though, she was wondering if he hit his head somewhere to ask such stupid questions. 
Or was it because he was too busy with perverted plays did he not focus on the conversation? Whatever the case, she replied, all the stronger ones are going to be in the inner areas. All, meaning even our allies. Almost all the Supremes are on our side and you do understand that most are going to be present on the big day. No stupid thing will happen in the inner areas with them being present. Oh. Lith totally felt like an idiot as he was too absorbed into his lewd plays. It seems he was in heat and needed to let off steam and relax to make his mind work properly again. Plugging Lucy up fully and spanking her but, he turned her around and hugged her, bringing his face close to hers. I forgot about it for a second. Lith said and made Lucy nod in understanding. Anything else you wanted to ask? Lucy asked. Yes. Do you need the maids for the event? Lith asked the important question he was here for. Lucy thought about it and since she needed time, Lith kissed her lips and started making out with her. A few seconds later, Lucy tapped out and answered, Our maids are a big pillar to our family. They have important roles in the coming event. Do you have something planned for which you need the maids? Lith nodded honestly. Yes, there is something. How many do you need? Lucy wondered what her little brother would do with the maids and asked. He would be fully packed during the banquet and would not have time to fool around. Lith thought about for a second whether he should answer his sister honestly or not. A second later, he came to a conclusion to keep things hidden and not lie. She'll come to know the truth of stuff eventually anyway. Lith strategically moved his hand under his sister's dress and inserted two fingers within her, making her face slightly flush and her body relaxed. Can I have them all? Lith felt it wouldn't hurt to ask and so he did. Lucy shook her head immediately. They're busy. And even if they weren't, at least fifty are always occupied in administrative work, so you can't involve them in things that would take up time. Lith nodded and said, understood. It seems he couldn't cause any chaos at the banquet and it would go without a hitch. Rubbing his hands down there, Lith then asked, can I borrow Freya for now? She'll be back in a few hours. Not a problem, answered Lucy. She had no idea what he wanted her for, but it didn't matter as she knew he or Freya would tell her later anyway. Lith smiled and kissed her lips. Thanks. He then took his hand out of Lucy's nethers and licked it in front of her, appreciating the taste of it. Lucy boldly licked his fingers too, making Lith chuckle. He gave her little kitty a light slap and walked out while hugging Freya and Luna at the sides. Looking at him go, Lucy smiled and shook her head. She tried to pull her panties up and go back to work, but realized there were no panties. Lucy stared at the bottom and a slight blush appeared on her face. He's becoming more shameless as he's growing up. She thought and went back to work, letting the cold breeze graze on her lower lips. In the hallway of the castle, Lith walked with Freya and Luna. Freya wondered what work her prince had so suddenly that needed her. As far as she knew, there was nothing Bella, Chinua, or Chief Luna didn't know. Knowing what Freya might be thinking, Lith chuckled and said spanking her but, we're going on a long ride. It's been a while. Freya's face slightly heated up but she nodded her head in agreement. Though, she still wondered what she had to do for her prince. Lith ventured out of the castle and there at the gates, a luxurious carriage pulled by seven nightmare horses was waiting for him. The driver of the carriage was Chinua. Lith contacted her on his way out and asked her to prepare a carriage while becoming the driver herself. Neither Chinua nor Luna or Freya knew what Lith wanted to do. But being good maids, they didn't try to be nosy and acted on his commands. Dot getting close to the carriage, Lith could see that the horses looked more majestic than the last time he saw them, about nine decades ago. They seemed healthy and muscular while their hooves apparently had a swirl of dark energy around it. Lith smiled and wondered just how many people were given nightmares to get these horses to this stage. He had read in a news article after waking up that people around the world were having troublesome nightmares, rendering them unable to sleep. The reason was unknown and no pills were working to stop people from having nightmares. 
They decided to stop sleeping but the mortals couldn't control themselves and slept anyway, only to be tortured by nightmares. Although it may seem like a bad thing, it was kind of good for the ones who suffered it. Their mental capacity would grow and they wouldn't break easily under torture or great mental stress. This. It applies to the ones who didn't kill themselves or die from the nightmares. Chuckling, Lith went inside the carriage and getting behind the driver Chinua, Lith placed his hand on her smooth inner thighs and whispered, to Langerhan City. Chinua's ears turned red with such a sudden gesture from the prince, but she nodded and tugging the reins, made the horses move. Lith went back as the horses started moving and not even a second later, Chinua felt a cold breeze down there, making her knit her brows and touch her nethers, only to have her ears turn further red. This was her first time driving a carriage and it seemed she would be doing a commando. Her prince sure had some peculiar tastes, she thought. Ding. Title achieved. Commando maker. Perks. 10x stealth boost when trying to steal panties. Lith chuckled again as the system handed him a title. It had the Lust Sovereign's inheritance in it and was not a surprise to get some perks for doing naughty things. Since he had been mingling with his lovers, wives, and maids in a normal manner, meaning not causing them troubles or pranking them, he hadn't gotten many achievements such as these. To get such achievements, he would need to become a big pervert and pull many such pranks. He didn't have too big of a drive to do such things, but it sure made him curious to know what other achievements there could be. Maybe he should try doing these things. No, shit. The dark side may be strong, but Lith was stronger. He wouldn't give in so easily. His gaze then fell on the stolen panties he was holding, it had a wet spot on it with quite the amazing fragrance. Okay maybe he should, to understand what scent the ladies had, for research purposes of course, thought Lith as he took a step closer to the dark side. Chapter 747 Why Must the Prince Tease Her Like This? You are listening at novelfull.audio. Getting back into the carriage, Lith saw Freya and Luna sitting on a couch and talking. The inside of the carriage was no less than a lavish room. It was intricately designed using space spells for the comfort of the royals. Lith went and sat beside Freya and wrapped his arm around her waist, pulling him in his embrace. He then chuckled and asked the blushing girl, do you know why I called you? Freya shook her head lightly. She didn't. If she did, she would have prepared herself to be of utmost help to her prince. Lith made Freya shift to his lap and hugging her from behind, he snapped his fingers and the walls of the carriage turned transparent. The ones on the inside could see the things outside clearly, but the opposite was not possible for obvious reasons. The scenery outside was that of the Queen's District in Evernight City. It was evident that the carriage was going to the Merchant's District from here, making Freya guess a few things. Knowing she must have some idea, Lith chuckled and pulled Freya's cheek, making her blush further. Gestures such as these from a prince charming like Lith were lethal for virgins like her. You were the first maid I ever saw in the castle. And while I was fascinated by these and wanted to play with them, Lith grabbed hold of Freya's G-cup breasts and lightly made them jiggle. I couldn't because I was occupied. Lith chuckled. I had plans to get you later but Naughty Luna charmed me with her seductive abilities. Then it was Chinua and then Bella. Luna at the side covered her mouth and giggled softly. The prince sure knew his way with words. Turning to the giggling Luna, Lith squinted his eyes and fondling Freya's breasts from over her clothes, said, look at her, the audacity to still laugh after keeping me away from my cute Freya. You'll definitely be punished for your wrongs. Luna didn't stop giggling and said, I am sorry, your highness. I couldn't stop myself. Looking around and noticing they were going to reach the merchant district, Lith turned Freya around and said looking into her eyes, you're special to me, Freya and I'll be making you my woman. But, if you don't want it, you can say it to me freely. There's no problem. Lith wouldn't do anything against the wishes of innocent girls like her. Freya was greatly flustered. How can the prince say such words like it's nothing? 
Did he have any idea how dangerous they are to a poor girl like her? Completely embarrassed, Freya said in a mosquito-dot-like voice, I. I want it. Lith chuckled. Then it's decided, he said and kissed her lips. Freya's thoughts turned blank and she felt herself melt as the prince kissed her. But being trained properly, she got herself together and reciprocated the kiss, completely forgetting the place she was in. The carriage was going through a long and busy merchant route. People could be seen walking and there were many other carriages as well. Although from the outside they couldn't see inside, the ones on the inside totally felt as if they were in open air. Lith broke the kiss after a while and got up with Freya. He gestured to Luna to come close and take their clothes off. They were gone in an instant and Freya was now totally nude. As she looked around, the open vibes made her shiver in shame and cling close to Lith. I am saving you for the banquet, but right now I am really craving some. Lith squeezed Freya's tender ass and rubbed his evil fingers on her wrinkled flower, making her tremble again in shame and anticipation. Her honeypot drooled after getting touched like that and she looked Lith in the eyes with a hazy gaze. Lith smiled and kissed her lips, then turned her to a wall and made her take support of it while sticking her butt out. Lith then squatted down and spreading Freya's smooth ass cheeks, he looked at the puckered flower and the drooling pussy. Lith licked her pussy and felt a sweet earthy flavor assault his tongue. He then went up and tasted her ass whole, getting a similar taste. Freya moaned and it was quite loud as the shame she was feeling was out of the world. Despite knowing the carriage couldn't be seen from the outside, just looked at the people from the inside made her ashamed of this act. It aroused new levels of pleasure for her and she knew she definitely couldn't go back to fingering herself. The carriage was roaming in the merchant district as per Litha's orders. Chinua had talismans on her in the carriage so it wasn't a problem for them to be known as the royals. They appeared like normal people and there were no problems. Lith got up after having a taste of this virgin flower. It sure was great. He then rubbed his shaft on it and made Freya clench her buttocks in reflex. Lith had to instruct Luna to make her relax, which she did by gently massaging her clit and rubbing her finger all across her slits. He also made her record the naughty things happening behind Freya's back and once he felt she was relaxed, Lith poked the little elf's forbidden entrance with his unholy sword and then pierced in one full thrust. Aw! Oh. Freya moaned loudly as she was pierced with a hard meat rod. She herself getting full and expected it to hurt quite a lot. However, nothing of sort happened as what flowed within her was great pleasure, making her legs threaten to give out. Lith used a spell and caused Freya's insides and his shaft to lube up properly. Once her insides adjusted to his size, he began the pounding right in the middle of a busy market, nobody could guess what was going on in the carriage right around them and Lith was having a great time. He made a note to do these things out in the open more often to corrupt innocent, ahem, to make his ladies reach new levels of pleasure. Squelch. 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 Ah. Your Highness, gentler. Freya moaned out. Oops. Lith slowed down after understanding she wasn't like his wives who could handle intense pounding. Lith looked down as his shaft slid in and out of his made sexy ass. The way her smooth peaches were jiggling was a delight to see. As Litha's gaze then fell outside, he smirked and putting his hands under Freya's knees, he lifted her up, making her whole front face the bush crowd. Ah. No. Your Highness, too shameful. Freya moaned and tried to resist, but she was also aroused and stupidly confused as to why her body and mind were so out of sync. Freya's insides tightened up and this tightness was much different than the rest of his ladies Lith felt. It was as if someone was trying to strangle his little brother with marshmallows. Continuing to enjoy this feeling, Lith made Chinua get out of the merchant district and finally make way towards Langerhan city. It just took a few seconds for the horses to skip this place and appear right on a lonely valley surrounded by red tulips. Lith walked out of the carriage and went to the driver's seat while pounding Freya. Luna followed. Chinua was minding her own business and driving the horses when she heard the slapping sounds turn louder. 
Turning around, she saw her prince walk out with Freya who was now hugging him like a koala and getting herself pounded. Sitting down beside Qinghua under her surprised gaze, Lith said, I have something important to talk about. Although he said that, his hand sneaked under Qinghua's skirt and flicked her clit. HSSSS. Qinghua gasped and clenched her legs together. Damn. Why must the prince tease her like this? He could just ask and she would happily throw herself at him. She was his anyway. Lith chuckled and taking his hand out from Qinghua's legs, he hugged her from the side. On the other side he hugged Luna and in the front was hugged by Freya who was unconsciously bouncing up and down in rhythm, lost in pleasure and forgetting that she was out in the open. Lith smiled and said to the three, All right you guys, listen up. Chapter 748 Ignorance is Bliss You are listening at NovelFull.audio The maids looked at their prince seriously when he said he had something important to tell. Even Freya, who was lost on Cloud Nine, sobered up. She was still being hit by pleasure as she hadn't gotten away from her prince's lap, but she had her ways to pay attention and not miss out on information. While his goose was being strangled by marshmallows, Lith said to his three maids. As you heard from Big Sis, the royal servants are busy. I can't utilize everybody for my stuff and thus, I plan to create servants of my own. The three nodded their heads even though they knew the statement was slightly false. His Highness could utilize everybody if he wanted to, Her Majesty and Madam would easily allow it if His Highness went to ask them nicely. But they could understand that he didn't want to trouble them by making everybody work for his own goals. Him creating a new batch of servants was something they had expected long before. Your Highness, do you have any idea on whom to recruit? Luna asked from the side. Lith turned to her and said while slithering his hand towards her inner thighs, Yes. I have a few places in mind. I was bored this one time before I went to sleep and fooled around the royal archives. I found a few interesting organizations, let's see if it's any good. While the Royal Library was out in public in Evernight City, the Royal Archives were hidden deep below the Royal Castle, in a completely different dimension. This place contained many secrets which even some of the most prominent Supremes didn't know about. Lith didn't get total access to it when he first entered as his mother had arrived right at that time. She taught him that day that sometimes ignorance was a bliss and he shouldn't absorb useless information. Sometimes there were some things that just getting to know about them would prove to be lethal. His mother gave him an example of the Hanging Red Rope sect which ended up discovering an ancient mural that contained some strange otherworldly letters. The sect was a first-rate sect and did its best to understand the language of the mural. When they finally deciphered it, they felt a warm surge of energy flow within them that eventually made them strong. The sect became so strong that it ended up joining the only five elite sects of the world. However, their rule was short.lived as their strength came with a curse. The curse was either to perform a forbidden ritual or forever live with vitality sucking maggots gnawing all over their body, until their death, which would be very very slow. Just imagining the curse came true made their whole being tremble. The sect's higher-ups tried to search for a way to break the curse, but it was to no avail. Time was running out and they eventually decided to perform the ritual in secrecy. But what ended up happening was that they summoned an ancient entity through the ritual who ended up sucking their vitality anyway. All the disciples as well as the people who knew about the mural were turned into a lifeless corpse and where the entity went was something nobody knew of. The Hanging Red Rope sect became a talk of their time for quite a while and many even commented on how these guys jinxed themselves by naming their sect in such a manner. It was as if they were destined to die. In any case, this story sent a chill down Litha's spine and made him understand the importance of sometimes just shutting the fuck up and not messing around. He took his mother's word seriously and with that, she was happy that she taught him a good lesson and let him explore a small portion of the archives that she felt may be useful to him. Lith spent a whole week studying the archives he felt were interesting and was escorted out by his mother. She was with him the entire time, to keep an eye lest he ran to some forbidden area. In the archives Lith learned a lot about the vampire cities. 
They weren't made out of thin air and were strategically located in the places they were. First and foremost, cities were made upon the places which had great economical value. Places containing rare minerals or even S and above ranked dungeons. The city Lith was heading to was one such place with a great abundance of dungeons. It also contained the main vampire branch of the World Adventurers Association. The association had one main branch in all continents with their headquarters situated in the neutral continent. Lith was heading there not for the World Adventurers Association, but to a hidden dungeon which shut off once a SS-ranked adventurer called Timeless went there. Timeless was said to be really mysterious and nobody had seen this person, not even the highest officials of the association. Though, the person was said to have taken on difficult missions related to time and brought great value to the association. So they never questioned this person and just let the identity be hidden. The world just knew this much but the archives contained more. Each manuscript in the archives contained what the world knew and what it didn't. It was organized in such a way for better understanding. What the archives contained more about Timeless was that this person brought a strong devil from the past that helped wreak havoc in a select few places. It didn't catch the attention of anybody since the two were good at hiding themselves. It was only when they both arrived in Langerhan City and triggered a few fate-related artifacts in the royal castle did they come to light. The royal servants didn't disturb them and just recorded the things they did. Whatever they did didn't affect the royal family and thus they pretty much didn't care about it. Lith found these guys interesting and wanted to see what they were up to in the hidden dungeon. News of them coming out was not recorded in the archives, which just meant they didn't come out. It was surprising since it had been a hundred thousand years since their entry. Your Highness, such a long time has passed. Why head to that place? We can instead go to Red Lever City and have a better chance at finding maids than here. Luna said after Litha's explanation was over. Lith, who was caressing Luna's trimmed bush hair, answered, Did you forget the name of the person, Luna? Luna shook her head. I remember the name. Lith smiled. Lightly slapping Luna's pussy, he said, Exactly. The name says Timeless. I have a hunch that this person may not have died. If my guess is correct, I'll have a time expert and if it isn't, it's not a problem. I have a lot of free time anyway. Luna nodded in understanding and then thought if she should ask more such questions. It was definitely not because she wanted to get another slap down there. Your Highness, how exactly do you plan to subdue such an old being to be your servant? Freya at the front finally spoke. Lith took his hand away from Luna's pussy and spanked Freya's butt, making her moan and leak juices. If I can handle some hot milfs like my two aunts, don't you think I can handle a SS rank adventurer? Well. Freya was at a loss for words as the unholy sword that was piercing her insides didn't let her focus properly. Chinua at the side, having her seat cup breasts fondled by her prince said, Your Highness you must understand. Both are different situ. NGHNN, Asians. Lith pinched her nipple a bit hard while she spoke and made her moan. He chuckled and pulling her cheek, said, I am aware of it, my drooling maid. I don't do things randomly. Lies, thought Chinua. She was not drooling. Okay, no, maybe a little, but still. His Highness did definitely do things randomly. Like who randomly fucks their maid in the ass during a serious convo and also plays with the other ones. Chinua wanted to say this but decided to keep her right to remain silent as his highness might end up doing something more shameful. Not that she hated it, but she was a little shy. Since nobody was asking more questions, Lith focused on bringing Freya to a big orgasm. She's had quite a few smaller ones, but it was about time she felt the biggest one of her life. Lith turned her around in a reverse cowgirl position without taking his shaft out and laid down. The driver's seat was wide and long enough to have a threesome easily. My maids, Freya deserves a big orgasm. Get to work. Lith instructed as he intensely started pounding Freya's inexperienced butthole. Ah. Ah. Ha. Ah. 
Freya moaned loudly as two more people joined the party. Qinyue and Luna sucked on her nipples while stimulating her clit. They didn't slide a finger inside as she was a virgin and they may end up breaking her hymen. Love juices splashed out of her breathing little fuckhole as she reached a new high of pleasure. It just took a few more minutes and Freya's body intensely shook. Oh! Freya arched her back and moaned loudly as her eyes rolled back and she passed out. This was the biggest orgasm of her life. She never expected a pounding in the ass could do such a thing. As Freya breathed heavily and was knocked out, Lith chuckled and kissed her forehead. This poor girl didn't need much attention and was satisfied with just a simple pounding. Lith had plans to nibble on her pointy ears but decided to not do it. It was a really sensitive spot for elves and the virgin Freya was not yet ready for it. Gently putting Freya to the side, the vampire prince attacked the poor human maiden at the side with his unholy sword and tortured her with pleasure throughout the journey, making a certain but plugged vampire maiden at the side to feel jealous. Chapter 749 Lith has a reputation to save you are listening at novel full dot audio. Langerhorn City, Nightingale The carriage stopped in a lonely valley situated between two towering mountain peaks. There was nothing special about this place and travelers would usually just neglect it. Had the archives not stated the exact location of the hidden dungeon, even Lith would have skipped it. Along with his three maids, he searched for a small rock with a hexagram inscribed on it. It took quite some time, but it was eventually found out. It was Luna who got it. Good job, Luna. Lith said with a smile. Here, you can wear your panties back now. Luna took the panties and pouted. To others this may seem like a relief, but to her it was no less than a punishment. She wanted to be available at all times to her prince. Lith chuckled knowing exactly what was going on in her head. He didn't respond to it though. Lith took the rock and threw it randomly on the mountain in front of him. As the rock's hitting sound was heard, the mountain trembled and it felt as if there was an earthquake. The mountain then split into two and a mighty gate manifested. The gate opened up in a few seconds and there was nothing but a bright light that came out of it. Let's go. Lith said to his maids and they ventured inside. Everything was bright at first but then they found themselves in a dark forest with oddly shaped trees. Ding. Hidden dungeon found. Establishing connection with the dungeon, success. Quest number one. The fruit of Nurblov and the yellow phantom. Info. The fruit of Nurblov grows on an ancient tree planted by the yellow phantom's ancestor to heal themselves from a hereditary plague. But due to a curse placed on them right before the ripening of fruit, the entire lineage was unable to harvest it. Generations after generations suffered and only one heir remains. Objective. Find the air, find the fruit. Feed the fruit to the air and pass the quest. Reward. Loyalty of the Yellow Phantom. Penalty. Curse of the Yellow Phantom after its death. Time limit. Until the death of the last remaining Yellow Phantom, 15 days. Lith was utterly speechless as he saw the system screen appear right in front of him showing a lot of details. Right after stepping into the dungeon, his system somehow established a connection with the dungeon and now here he was, having a quest out of nowhere. This dungeon wasn't cleared. Lith couldn't help but ask his maids. The three shook their heads as they had no idea about this place. Welp, seems like we'll need to finish a quest then. Lith said and went deeper into the forest with his girls. Nightingale News of a dungeon suddenly appearing alerted the adventurers and made them all leave everything they were doing and flock to this place. The World Adventurers Association got the news too and after some research via their special artifacts, they handed out the news that this place was dangerous. It was a SS plus ranked dungeon and people should be careful. The adventurers listened to the commands and formed appropriate teams and went in. By the end of the first day, Elite groups from around the world had entered the dungeon. 
The World Adventures Association helped teleport the affiliated adventurers to this place as quickly as possible and by the end of the day, approximately a thousand people had entered the dungeon. Back in the royal castle, Lilith was slightly annoyed as she felt Lith enter the dungeon. Such a big banquet was coming up in two days and he had left the castle to conquer some dungeon. Lilith could only think about whether she was spoiling him too much and after a few seconds of thinking, she came to the conclusion that she wasn't spoiling him enough and needed to spoil him some more. She was still annoyed though. But being a good mother, she looked after him. With the snap of her finger, the time ratios changed and in just a few minutes, Lith should be out of it. Lilith was looking forward with a smile to what her baby would bring from within the dungeon. The Hidden Dungeon Dot completely unaware that his mother had flipped the time ratios, Lith was hurrying to find the damn fruit and phantom. He had his banquet two days later and if he was late, he was sure he was in for a good round of spanking from his mother. That's right. Even though he was a grown-up now and had hardly ever gotten spanked because his mother loved him to no ends, there were some times when he had messed up and gotten punished. The spanks were no joke. They really hurt and Lith didn't want to have a repeat of it. He was now a proud young master. It was him who handed out the spanks and not the other way round. But damn his situation. If he was a young master, his mother was the mother of the young master. A super op character who feared none. He had to get out of this dungeon within two days or it would really be troublesome. He had a reputation to save and also his butt cheeks. Did you find anything, Freya? Lith asked telepathically while swimming at the bottom of a river. He had shared talismans with his maids and they could now communicate telepathically. No, your highness. But I did find a few suspicious people. What? Your highness, Qingyue here. The suspicious people Freya may be talking about aren't suspicious. They're adventurers. They must have entered the dungeon after us. Put a marker on them and keep the search for the fruit going. We can't afford to waste time. Understood. Freya and Qingyue said at the same time. Lith, who was swimming to the bottom of the river, found a tree bearing some fruits. Wondering if it was the so dot called Nurbla fruit, Lith went to examine it. Pzzzttt. The tree's branches came to life like tentacles and as Lith was close, got hold of him. The first branch wrapped around Litha's ankle and pulling him closer, more tentacles wrapped themselves all around his body. Son of a bitch. I am not into tentacle play. Lith cursed internally as he tried to cast spells and get out. To his dismay, spells didn't work as the branches had sealed his ability to feel elemental energies. Fuck. Lith cursed. I'll be molested by a damn tree. Lith struggled to free himself from the tentacles of the trees and having no choice, he bit hard on the branch wrapped around his hand and tore it off. The tree trembled and whipped a branch to hit Litha's back. Bastard. Lith cursed. Although his pain tolerance was high, being whipped like a peasant didn't suit a noble prince like him. It wasn't physical damage but emotional one now. Since the bite worked, Lith extended his fangs out and tore off some more branches from his hand and freeing it, immediately took out a dagger attached to his ankle. Fwip. Fwip. Lith cut the branches as fast as he could and swam out of the grasp of the tree. Getting the ability to feel elemental energies again, Lith wasted no time and used the destruction element to cast an AoE spell. Orbs of destruction energy rained down on the three and obliterated it to nothingness, leaving a crater at the place it was. There in the middle of the crater, there was a metal chest. Lith carefully approached the metal chest and finding no problems, took it outside water. Being drenched from head to toe with water and having his clothes torn off in various places, Lith cursed the tentacle tree. If he found it in the outside world again, he would burn his whole bloodline down. But looking back at how the branches so easily wrapped around his body, he must say, what the fuck am I thinking? Lith became conscious of his thoughts and cursed himself. Shaking his head, Lith focused on the metal chest. Just as he was about to open it. 
oi beggar, get away from the chest.